Jim Rohn, an American entrepreneur and motivational speaker, once said, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So while we're all authentic individuals, there's truth to this statement. The people we spend time with influence us more than we realize. I can't help but use the, the usual example of high school friends. I remember in high school, whenever I hung out with my friends, I started to think like them, to talk like them. Our sense of humor has became the same. It just happened and I didn't even realize. It's not like I wanted that to happen. It just did. The people we spend a lot of time with influence us, whether we're aware of it or not, and whether we'd like to accept it or not. We behave according to socially accepted conventions or standards that we're surrounded with. You could say we naturally will conform to our social environment. The Bible tells us, however, that there's a better way of life. Romans 12.2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So according to Paul, we have two options, either conform to the world or be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And to conform sounds like the default option. There's no sitting on the fence here. Either you'll be transformed or you'll conform to the world around you. So if you aren't being transformed, inevitably you will conform to worldliness. And to conform to the world means to take the world's standards and make them our own. This happens with how we talk, think, dress, even how we decide our goals, our desires, what's right and wrong, the definitions of true social justice, of true masculinity, of femininity, of what true leadership looks like. All of these can be defined by the world or by God. And often, most often, they look very different. You'll notice also that Paul does not say that we can conform to the ways of God. He realized that the only way a positive and permanent change of behavior can come is through a radical transformation that must begin in our minds. When we try to simply conform our behavior to church culture or Seventh-day Adventist standards, it doesn't work. We might find ourselves in the ditches of legalism or liberalism. Without the Holy Spirit in our hearts, we won't be able to see the middle ground. Otherwise, it'll just be a a round of routine, going through the motions, following the rules of Sabbath and whatever, having a form of godliness, but without the power. So for today in our 10 days of prayer, I would encourage you to spend time in prayer, not because that's what good Christians should do, or to say that you spent time in prayer today, or to say you went to prayer meeting, to check devotions off your daily list, because prayer is not the end goal. It's actually a means to an end. Pray with the goal of spending time with Jesus. Make him one of your close friends, your top five. Make him the top friend so that you start to talk like him and think like him and act like him. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect.